Thanks for Renegades of the Podcast. It is episode two. I am Remy. This is Juliet. We are the duo on Hurts Irons Incorporated. We thank you guys so much for tuning in. Hope you guys enjoyed our first episode. If you haven't, you know, you can go listen to that after you, you listen to this one. And that was our New Year's Eve debut yes. episode. And this is our live from Cozumel Island. Yes. Off the, the coast of the Mayan Riviera. We are at the beach right now. Our annual winter is stupid trip. Yes. Getting away from all the snow. and We've had two crazy snowstorms in Virginia in the past like week. So we're like, you know what? <laughs> How about no? How about 80 degrees? Exactly. Exactly. That's why we have our, our, our vacation glass of wine. Exactly. So yes. cheers, guys. So we have a special show lined up for you guys. So as most of you probably know, we, we make music that's very synthy and very kind of synth based. Our our sound right now is kind of very kind of like taking a lot of influence from the synth sounds of the 80s. We've kind of fallen into kind of the, the, the greater like synth wave scene that's going on. It's been a pretty cool um, experience. Finally, we found a lot of like like minded people who are influenced by a lot of the same stuff that we are. And it's really cool. So we thought it was it might be a cool idea because a lot of synthwave music, a lot of the, this kind of synth-based music that's happening right now, even the stuff that sounds poppy is kind of like taking a lot of influence from cinema, mm-hmm. whether it's cinema of the 80s or cinema that is inspired by that aesthetic. And so we thought it would be cool to kind of check out um, three movies that are kind of either synthwave or cyberpunk inspired or in, ended up inspiring synthwave in some way, whether it's that, that aesthetic or the sound of it be it its soundtracks and stuff like that, because there's a few of those movies that have influenced that that we haven't seen, and a few that we have. <laughs> and um, actually, going into this episode, all three of these movies, I had not seen any of these all the way through. I had seen like bits and parts of some of the ones we're going to talk about, but I had never actually fully seen any of these movies prior to us getting ready for this podcast. So it was going to be pretty cool. Yes, two of them I, I know extremely well and have seen many, many, many times. And one was new to me, so it was it was nice to watch something very cool and get ready for this this conversation. Yeah, absolutely. And um, actually, we're going to start with, with that one, with the film that neither of us had seen prior to this, but has, has been kind of pinpointed as the beginning of what we now call the, what we now call synthwave. Uh, it kind of like started there, and then like Stranger Things was when it went like really exploded. But like, but a lot of people trace it back to the 2011 movie Drive, starring Ryan Gosling, which is the first movie we're going to review. So um, I knew a little bit about this movie going what's, in. What's Sally Sparrow's name? Oh, oh God, what is her character's name? Oh, you talking about the her actress. actress's name? The actress. Oh, um, uh, Carrie Mulligan. Yes. So, Ryan Gosling and Carrie Mulligan. Carrie Mulligan, yes. She's awesome, and, and we like her. I don't want to and like, not mention the Exactly, movie. right, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. Yeah. And um, Oscar Isaac is in it, too, which I didn't know he was in it. And also, uh, Brian Cranston. and um, Christina um, Hendricks. Yeah. She's mm-hmm. amazing. Joan, also. Oh, yeah, that's Firefly. right. Yeah, yeah. yeah, Joan from, um, from yeah. Mad Men. Yeah, but yeah. I, first, I first found her on Firefly. Gotcha. Love Christina Hendricks. Yeah, she's got a small part in it as well. Yeah. So it was cool because, um, yeah, so the, the, this is a movie that it's, um, basically it follows Ryan Gosling's character who's, he's a Hollywood driving, like, stunt guy by day, but, like, by night he, like, runs, like, he helps, like, I guess, criminals. He's a getaway like, driver. He's a getaway driver. Which is, uh, the, the, which, you can pay yeah. him for five minutes of his time. You cannot be a minute early. You cannot be a minute late. You get five minutes of his time, and he'll never talk to you again. For that five minutes, he will drive you where you need to go. Yeah. Yeah. So he asks no questions, and people just pull jobs, and they have him for five minutes. Yeah. And it's just sort of this clandestine, amoral sort of stance. Like, he doesn't really know about the crime. He doesn't mm-hmm. really care about the crime. Not really clear. Yeah. He just drives really well, mm-hmm. and is good at evading the police when necessary. Yeah. Yeah. And the, the the opening track obviously is like the big like one of the godfathers of synthwave is, is Kavinsky in that first track that night call track is mm-hmm. like that's one of the ones that people point to as like you know starting kind of the just, genre. just starting the genre and beginning it and it, that 
that kind of that kind of run through it. Even though the movie does not take place in the eighties, there's no real connection to the decade other than that. Other than they just wanted the to very like exactly yeah. kind of electronic, kind of cold, kind of, and it works really well because like, you know, he's because Ryan Gosling's character, he's he is the hero of the of the movie. He's definitely probably the most moral character in the whole thing. Maybe maybe except for Carrie Mulligan's character, who's just you know maybe. Single, well, single mom. Maybe who we, we his don't husband know. was in prison because he was a career criminal. So we're not totally clear. Yeah, I mean that her is, is her spouse. She herself does not seem to be at all involved in crime. But she is definitely wrapped up real close to a lot of it. Yeah. So, but yeah, it, it's kind of a morally ambiguous movie anyway because you're like you're rooting for people and everybody's involved in crime, so you just have to kind of feel a little bit complicit with liking anyone mm-hmm. in the film. Yeah. And uh, and and rooting for anyone at all, you're it's it's definitely one of those film noir kinds of things that there there is no pure white. Everything is a shade of gray. Mm-hmm. Um, there's darkness and light, and it just gives you shadows and relief, and you know. Yeah, and yeah, like Ryan Gosling, he is the hero. He comes off like he's got kind of like morals. He like he ends up taking on this. Um, Are we gonna? We're doing spoilers. Uh, yeah, I you guess, should probably I guess, drop. You yeah, should probably, probably watch, watch it. it. Yeah, just watch it. Yeah, he yeah. gets caught up in a bunch of stuff that's definitely beyond him, and, yeah. and sort of out of his hands. Right. Yeah, and he yeah. just exactly. has to respond. When one of the heists that he agrees to work for, for his own reasons, uh, goes horribly, horribly wrong. Yeah. And so without sort of having to give away any of the suspense of the movie, because it yeah. is quite a nice movie, it has a lot of tension. Mm-hmm. And the thing that I yeah. liked a lot about it, along with the soundtrack being like very, very well, well balanced, well dropped, well timed, you know, Synthway was really lovely to drive to when he's driving to a long <laughs> film. Um, so these beautiful sort of music video-esque periods of time in which the soundtrack is the star of the film and that he's the background like you're watching it but it's really all about the song that's playing there's one at night that starts but then also in the daytime they're like going through the aqueducts um that get all the water runoff when it rains in la and um that sort of thing so there's like beautiful moments like that but part of what i really liked about the movie that was very distinctive is it's very very quiet it does not have dialogue unless it has to have dialogue Mm -hmm. and scenes take a long time there's a lot of beats Mm-hmm. Between thoughts, yeah. beats between change or response and emotion and interaction between characters, and there's a lot of silence. Mm-hmm. It's one of the most comfortable with its own silence films yeah. I've mm-hmm. ever seen. Yeah. That was not just a straight up silent movie. Yeah. So that was very mm-hmm. interesting because I, I had no idea that that would be the tone of the film. So that was a surprise to me seeing it for the first time. That I thought was. Really well done. They uh, they clearly made yeah. a very very conscious choice. And Ryan Gosling's character is a very very quiet guy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he doesn't always speak yeah. unless there's a reason to. And then he he falls for Carrie Mulligan's mm-hmm. character. She is yeah. also an extremely quiet person who's very internal. So they're both very internal, and you're watching for sort of subtle clues about what's going on with them. And there's just stuff like just expressions or like eye contact and kind of the dynamic that you're reading Mm -hmm. because they're both the kind of people that um, express themselves without words. Yeah. And that's really interesting Mm -hmm. because, you know, our our culture kind of privileges extroversion so much that it's really rare to see like such a like very calm, very confident portrayal of two introverts falling in love quietly. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. You have a complicated sort of, you know, she's not actually available. Her husband was just in, in jail. Exactly, yeah. They have, that she's not even separated except because her husband's in jail or prison, but he's been away for a little while. Yeah. And, but they fall for each other, and then, and it's all sort of just... Right. A, yeah, I mean, it's, it's funny because, like, yeah, um, I was going to say, um, Ryan Gosling's character, he come he... he Comes off as probably one of the most moral characters in the movie, but at the same time, he still comes off. He's still, at least to me anyway, is still a bit of a sociopath, <laughs> like a little bit. <laughs> like, Stuff goes really, sure. really, really wrong, yeah. and he just handles it, and he mm-hmm. handles yeah. it like a career criminal would handle it. He does mm-hmm. not handle it like a random member of the public that suddenly got caught up in crime would handle it, mm-hmm. which would be like freak out, and run away. He handles stuff. Yeah. So mm-hmm. you know, I did not feel. T- it was just so morally ambiguous. Yeah. I would not mm-hmm. call him a moral character. I would not say he was an immoral. He was not an evil character. He was not pursuing evil ends. He was more of a mm-hmm. protector. 
and then just kind of didn't really care about the legality of stuff and he can drive well so he made that part of his career yeah both legal things like driving for the movies and totally illegal things like being a getaway driver for random criminals mm-hmm. who don't actually personally know yeah so it was just gray area to me mm-hmm. his yeah. his stance but yeah i mean Stuff happens, mm-hmm. and it's there's some graphic stuff. Like if you don't like, oh yeah, yeah, seeing a little of the old ultra violence, like be careful with that movie. Um, you know, if, if so really, some, really intense, yeah. hardcore, sudden, oh, yeah. shocking mm-hmm. moments of, of a lot of violence being shown candidly on film are a problem for you, then you probably just want to excerpt this by watching some YouTube clips and like there listening to the soundtrack because mm-hmm. it it would be a difficult movie for people that really don't like to see like because yeah. yeah. Things go wrong. Mm-hmm. There was some crazy stuff, yeah, for and sure. and and the quiet, like two introverts falling for each other thing, is so different than like crime going wrong and this like very very hyper violent sort of mm-hmm. catastrophe of dominoes. It's like this domino effect mm-hmm. of just like awfulness that happens, and they're responding to things, um, and they're responding quite well, all things considered. Yeah, um, the best probably one could do, but it's violent, you know, and yeah. it, and so that contrast. Between these joyful moments with the driving and the beautiful mm-hmm. music, and then these quiet moments of these two intense, very quiet characters falling for each other, and then this like catastrophe of a heist that mm-hmm. just leads to more and more and more stuff. I mean, it's a super interesting film. As a person yeah. that loves cinema, like that's a complex. It was based on a, on a book, which I, I think I saw at the very beginning, like based gotcha. on, on a yeah. novel, which mm-hmm. made me want to go definitely read the novel because mm-hmm. the music had such a personality in the film. And it made me wonder, what's it like to back out of having the soundtrack and actually read this story without music? Yeah. Um, because it was so beautifully done with the music. Mm-hmm. I think seeing it first, it would probably yeah. be missing something for me just reading it. But I do mm-hmm. like to see where stories come from. And I, I enjoy reading the books that go with films. A lot of times I try to read the book first um, so that then I can go into the film. But it's okay. You know, the way it works, too. Yeah. So you, you didn't know anything about this film going in, right? Like you, Nothing. Have you even like heard of it? I've heard of it. Okay, gotcha. Um, I guess before we like get into like the plot details and spoilers and stuff, like what would you, what would you rank it? Like, a, like out of against 10. what? Okay. Out of ten, <laughs> one to ten, one being like worst thing you've ever seen, ten being best. Oh, it, it's a it's a really interesting film that has a lot of style and integrity to the style that the director's choosing um, tonally it just it has its own distinctiveness and I think that it was well cast mm-hmm. well scripted well acted um, very very well directed soundtracks nicely integrated so I mean it's probably like an eight or something I mean for like accomplishing yeah. its own ends like it's a 10 I mean obviously for, yeah. the, for the director it's a 10 out of 10 I think because it really does what it sets out to do. Mm-hmm. For me, I like a lot yeah. of films, and sometimes I really don't like films with a lot of hyperviolence. Yeah, hyper-vi- yeah. um, I would say that like I hung in there with this one; it was okay. Yeah. Um, and I would still rate it really highly. So yeah, yeah I would probably give it an eight. Like it's a yeah. really good movie. Yeah, I'm thinking like I don't know, like eight point five or nine. It's hard for me to, because like I can't think of any for my scale. I can't think of anything like um, in this particular film that I would maybe do differently. Yeah. And that's really like there wasn't anything that really took me out of it that I can think of off, off the top of my head. So it's hard for me to give it a score any lower than that. Yeah. But um I guess let's get into spoilers now. So if you if you don't want any spoilers, skip ahead. But we'll get into like plot details out. I honestly I think my favorite scene in this entire movie was that first scene. Him just driving. The first scene with him just driving, because like the again the quiet moments, and he's listening to the police scanner to find out how, like how how on his tail they are, like the whole like quiet tension when he's like escaping yeah. with the criminals in the back, and like they're just like you know, yeah, yeah, and, and he's like, maneuvering really, expertly. Yeah. <laughs> it's like going really really fast, and it's bright, and then he like pulls into a shadow and he's behind a car, and the police go by quietly, and then he's back in the, it's like <laughs> tension, yeah. and then it's hiding, and it's quiet, and then and then it's car, you know, and then there's a helicopter on the bridge. Like, oh, the helicopter yeah. found him. And there's a bigger crime somewhere else. The helicopter goes away. So there's just like there's just like this mm-hmm. sort of arc of things, and I'm like watching it thinking, 
I bet he's going to get out of this one so that we get to believe in him that he's good mm -hmm. and everything he's ever done does not go horribly wrong, but I have a feeling this is yeah. going to be our positive something. case. Yeah, exactly. And then we're going to have a movie because of something that goes Just wrong. something does go horribly wrong. Because he, he not he, having known anything about the story. I, that he was befriends it. Carrie Mulligan's character and also she has a, a son. Who's Wonderful like little five, son. Six yeah. years old, something like that. Something in that ballpark. Yeah, yeah. And that's the thing with his relationship between he lo he falls in love with the girl Judy and the son. Mulligan is like I don't know how much of it is even like even you could call a romantic thing because he he's not really hanging in around with her to like you know get some he's he's hanging out with her just you know yeah it's very kind of like well, comes off anyway very altruistic at least in, in I think I think he falls for her completely but she's not available yeah she's not available because, so they don't actually have an affair yeah. like the only thing that happens is that like he kisses her in the elevator as yeah. far as mm -hmm. you're shown in the film they never. They never have an affair. She, they never literally cheat on her husband. Yeah. Um, because by the time they kiss the elevator, her husband is no longer in the picture. Her husband is already... Yeah. Everything's already gone to hell. And he the did. husband's yeah. out of there, so mm -hmm. yeah. no more husband. He's only yeah. in the film for a little yeah, bit. Yeah, Oscar Isaac plays her husband, <laughs> and he had just gotten out of jail, and he owes a bunch of people a bunch of money, and so uh, he... Uh, Ryan Go I think Ryan Gosling's character is just called Driver. Driver doesn't have a name, a name. <laughs> which yeah. also makes me think: How do they do that in the book? Is that yeah. the truth? Like, driver says this, driver does that. When you're reading it, that would really be obvious. Yeah. But yeah, in the credits, he's just driver. He never has a name. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, the husband gets out of jail and he gets strong armed into yeah. doing a heist. He does not want to do. He wants to go clean. Yeah. He does not want to continue yeah. doing doing um, illegal crimes. But he owes gangsters protection yeah. money from being in prison. And so they tell him that he has to do this one heist. So Driver helps... Uh, so Driver, by um, this point, has fallen for the family yeah. and decides to help the husband who's got him out of jail because they beat him up when he says... The, the gangsters beat up the husband and he tries to refuse the job. Yeah. And they give the son who witnesses it a bullet. Just one big-ass bullet. And so Driver happens upon the father and the son... Um, as the gangsters are leaving the scene, mm -hmm. and he works with enough criminals to kind of immediately recognize that those are those are thugs, yeah. and goes to see what's going on because they're kind of tucked away. And then, like when he sees the little boy clutching the bullet, and the little boy says, "He said to keep it, and I shouldn't lose this." And mm -hmm. you know, next yeah. time, yeah, that's for me or whatever. And so, and basically at that point, the driver's like, "All right, I gotta help this guy. He's in over his head." I could probably do this better than he can. I don't want anything to happen to the wife or the kid, so I'm, I'm just gonna. Yeah. I'm gonna be his driver. They try to get rid of him, yeah. have him not be on the on the yeah. the gig with them. And, and the people he owes money to, the like crime lords. It's um, was it is it Albert Brooks? Albert Brooks. Ron Albert Brooks and Perlman. Ron Perlman. Yeah. Yeah. Ron and Perlman. He is meet, great. He, and, and the driver He's meets met them. the two of them earlier in the film because I guess they're like they're connected with them to the, the garage. Highway, yeah, the garage that they get the cars yeah. from for the yeah. They're connected the already teams. through. Just kind of the seedy underbelly of people that sometimes do crime. They're already connected. Yeah. But not, but, it, you know, when he finds his heist starts to unravel, it turns out it's it's the two of the crime bosses he actually has personally been introduced to. And so he thinks maybe he can make things right or, like, just give them all the money that he ends up with yeah. um, and get away clean. But it's not really quite that easy. I hate giving everything away. Yeah, it's fine. That's it. And we can we can stop okay. the spoilers there. But anyway, it's drive. worth watching. We, we liked it. We really enjoyed it. Definitely see how the the soundtrack planted those seeds. I've definitely heard a few of those songs before, yeah. like pop up on like playlists that you know I've listened yeah. to. So like, yeah, yeah. So yeah, very cool. Um, so hope you guys enjoyed that.